We're going to talk about the United States Supreme Court and specifically their regulatory agenda that's going to impact negatively, I think, the ATF and some of the shenanigans that they're trying to pull. We're going to break this all down and summarize it for you so you know exactly who to cheer for and what to cheer for over the next six to seven months in the Supreme Court and beyond when it comes to ATF overreach. Stay tuned. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Box of Diner, proud American governor, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and author of First They Came for the Gun Owners. Check it out if you don't already own a copy. All right, folks. So I just want to pause, step back for just a short period of time in this video. And all I want to do is talk about where we as a Second Amendment community stand when it comes to regulatory issues dealing specifically with the powers of of the ATF to take away our rights. Now again, quick reminder, the ATF is a regulatory agency. It is an executive agency that ultimately reports to the President of the United States as part of the executive branch. The ATF gets its powers and authority, and remember we've talked about this before to be very precise. Governments have powers and authority. They're not necessarily the same, a government can exercise a power and go beyond the scope of its authority, which makes it ultra vires or unacceptable or illegal. So again, when you talk about governmental powers, what a state can do, what the federal government can do, talk about it in the terms of powers and authority, okay? Individuals, we have rights. So government has powers and authorities. Individuals have rights. That is the lingo that you should be using going forward. And that is important to understand what I'm about to talk about, which is the U.S. Supreme Court's critical cases. They're going to have a major impact on the authority or the lack of authority of the ATF going forward. And just so you understand, as I see it, big picture wise, which is what we're talking about now, there's four big picture concepts going on as we speak, you need to be familiar with. When you think about these big picture concepts, you need to start with where is the Supreme Court right now and what cases they're hearing. Right now, the Supreme Court is hearing a case. They've already agreed to hear the case called Loper Bright versus the Commerce Department. It's the name of the head of the Commerce Department. You don't need to know the name. Bottom line is Loper Bright. Loper Bright, we've talked about this before, specifically is a case that says, we're gonna decide for once and for all is the quote-unquote Chevron Doctrine still good law? Is the Chevron Doctrine still binding on courts? Now, the Chevron Doctrine is something that you and I should 100% be cheering against. Chevron Doctrine is bad. Say it with me out loud. Chevron Doctrine is bad. We want it dead. We want it dead. Why do we want the Chevron Doctrine to die? You see, the Chevron Doctrine, which is named after a Supreme Court case called Chevron, the Chevron Doctrine states that if there is any kind of an ambiguity or question mark about what a congressional statute means, the administrative agency that is in charge of interpreting, applying, working with, dealing with that statute has the say as to what it means. And unless they say something that is absolutely inconsistent with the meaning of that statute, the regulatory agency, including, for example, the ATF, the FBI, the CIA, the FDA, the EPA, and so on and so on and so on, under the Chevron Doctrine, their interpretations of the statutes are to be deferred to including by courts. So as long as these agencies come forth with a reasonable understanding or a reasonable interpretation of these federal statutes, their interpretation goes. The reason why this is terrible for the Second Amendment is that basically the Chevron Doctrine gives extra authority and powers to the ATF and all the agencies, by the way, to basically be uh, the judge the jury, and the executioner under a lot of these laws. So, for example, when Congress enacts a gun control law and gives the ATF authority to enforce it, such as the National Firearms Act and the Gun Control Act of 1968 and its amendments we saw in, like, 1986, for example, 
The ATF could say that we read those statutes and we, the ATF, think that we have the right to regulate pistol braces and treat them as NFA items because we think that's in a reasonable interpretation. We, the ATF, thinks that the definition of frames and receivers and firearms under the various gun control laws allow us, the ATF, to say that parts of frames and receivers are the same as frames and receivers, that partially completed frames and receivers are the same as actually completed frames and receivers. You see, so the Chevron Doctrine allows for courts, or, or actually compels in many respects, courts to defer to the ATF and these agencies' interpretation of the statute that they are responsible for enforcing. So it's very one-sided and totally inappropriate. It also usurps the power of federal courts who are tasked with the responsibility of interpreting and saying what the law is. You know the old saying, Congress enacts a law, the president executive branch enforces the law, and the court system, Article 3 of the U.S. Constitution, interprets the law. That's our three branches of government. It's very basic. Congress passes the law, the president enforces the law, the judges interpret the law and tell us what it means. So now that we've talked about the Supreme Court's current case, what's the next critical thing you need to know about going forward? That is, you need to know about the bump stock cases. The bump stock cases are coming up. They're going to be conference, which means the Supreme Court on October 27th, circle this in your calendars, October 27th, 2023, the Supreme Court is going to conference, which means the justices are going to come together and vote whether or not to take one or more of these bump stock cases. Now, there are three bump stock cases, all of which are available for the Supreme Court to take. They could take one, they could take two, they could take three. Hard to say, they probably would take one and then hold the other two in abeyance and then do it that way. So the three cases on October 27th that you want to cheer for one of these cases to be granted cert is either, I believe it's pronounced the Godes case, that's G-U-E-D-E-S, the Godes case, that was out of the District of Columbia. In that case, the bump stock plaintiffs lost that case, and the D.C. Court of Appeals said that ATF had the authority to essentially ban bump stocks. Then you have the Harding case, the Harding case, out of the Sixth Circuit. This is a sort of a Midwest court, the Sixth Circuit. Um, they said actually that we in the, Second Amendment, in the Second Amendment community win. They said that the bump stock regulation promulgated by ATF was unconstitutional and illegal. The ATF lacked the authority to ban bump stocks under their enabling statutes. You see why the Chevron Doctrine is so important? Because again, ATF tries to say, oh, we believe we have the authority to ban bump stocks. And since you have to defer to us, we win, but no, the Harding decision in the Sixth Circuit says no can do. And then, of course, we have the famous Michael Cargill case. Uh, great guy to follow on Twitter, Michael Cargill. Cargill is before the Supreme Court. That was a victory, again, for the Second Amendment community pro bump stock team. Uh, Michael Cargill and his team won. And now that's before the U.S. Supreme Court. So either the Goody's case, the Harding case, or the Cargill case, I suspect one of them will be granted cert. And that is exactly what we want because it would be nothing better in this term in the context of regulatory and the ATF overreach than to have the bump stock ban get struck down as an absurd extension of ATF authority. That will be a major blow to ATF. At the same time, the destruction of Chevron, which again is another big arrow, huge arrow. It's actually really a nuclear missile type arrow in the quiver of the ATF. So it will be a very bad term for the ATF if they lose the bump stock case and the Chevron doctrine all in the same six to eight months. And that is exactly what we in the Second Amendment community should be cheering for. The other two things just to be aware of that's in, you know, in the pipe. I'm just going to allude to these quickly. One, of course, is we have the Mock versus Garland related cases dealing with pistol braces. As you know, a lot of people are protected under the various injunctions that have been entered involving the pistol braces, which of course is simply a handgun and a brace brought together. Uh, we've talked about this before. Handguns are protected arms. Rifles are protected arms. Why is a short barrel rifle not a protected arm under the Second Amendment? Inquiring, mind want, inquiring minds want to know. But anyway, the pistol brace issue uh, is being litigated up to the Supreme Court. So pay attention to that. That's sort of the third category of things to look for. And of course, we have the 
Um, we have the frame and receiver or ghost gun regulations, again, being litigated back and forth in the Vanderstock case. So again, the four things to look for involving administrative law that affect your Second Amendment rights, big time. The big four items for the next six to eight months are we want the Chevron doctrine to be destroyed. We want the bump stock case to be granted cert and the bump stock banned by the ATF to be destroyed by the Supreme Court in the Supreme Court's term this year that is between now and June of 2024. And we want the Vanderstock case dealing with frames and receivers to prevail. And we want the mock versus Garland case dealing with pistol braces also to prevail. So those are the four big, big picture items that I see dealing with uh, ATF overreach and Joe Biden overreach using regulators and the executive branch and a pen and a phone, if you will, to take away our rights. So those are the four things you need to watch for. And uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed. I think there's a great chance we're going to get positive, great outcomes in all four of those categories. But it's going to be a fight. Always a fight for freedom. Freedom is not free. We all know this. All right, folks. Hope you learned a little bit of something here today. Uh, and we'll talk to you again soon. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at 4 Boxes Diner. And we'll see you again soon here at the 4 Boxes Diner. Orders up. Table 2A.